Wastewater treatment involves the removal of contaminants from water to produce effluents suitable for discharge into the environment or reuse. The treatment process typically includes physical, chemical, and biological methods to remove solids, organic matter, nutrients, and pathogens. Sludge is generated during both the primary and secondary treatment phases. Primary sludge is formed during sedimentation in the primary clarifiers. It contains settleable solids and grease with a high organic content. Secondary sludge, also known as waste-activated sludge, is produced from biological treatment processes. It consists of excess microorganisms and other organic matter generated during the degradation of wastewater contaminants. Tertiary sludge may also be produced in advanced treatment stages, such as chemical precipitation for phosphorus removal or filtration processes. On average, sludge can constitute 1-2% to of the treated wastewater volume but accounts for up to 50% of the operational expenses in treatment plants. Sludge handling involves several steps to reduce its volume and prepare it for disposal or reuse. 1. Thickening reduces the water content of sludge to decrease its volume before further processing. Common methods include gravity thickening and dissolved air flotation. 2. Stabilization reduces the pathogenicity and odor of sludge through processes such as anaerobic digestion, aerobic digestion, or lime stabilization. 3. Dewatering further reduces water content to produce sludge cakes that are easier to transport and dispose of. Techniques include centrifugation, belt filter presses, and screw presses. 4. Drying removes additional moisture, often using heat, to produce a dry product that is lighter and easier to manage. 5. Disposal or reuse includes land application as a soil amendment, incineration, or disposal in landfills. Anaerobic digestion is a widely used process in wastewater treatment plants to manage and stabilize sludge. It involves the biological degradation of organic material in the absence of oxygen, resulting in significant volume reduction, stabilization of sludge, and the generation of biogas. This multi-benefit process contributes to sustainable sludge management by addressing key challenges such as odor control, pathogen reduction, and energy recovery. In this video, we will focus on two calculations related to anaerobic digesters. First is estimating the quantity of sludge generated from wastewater treatment primary and secondary processes. Second is calculating the volume of an anaerobic digester. To calculate the sludge quantity, two equations are used together. One is used to calculate the primary sludge generated from the primary treatment. The other is used to calculate the secondary sludge produced during the secondary treatment. The primary treatment is a physical and sometimes chemical process. Therefore, the production of sludge is linearly correlated with the service population of the wastewater treatment plant and the per capita solids contribution. Unlike the primary treatment, the secondary treatment involves biological degradation such as during the activated sludge process. Therefore, it is important to track the decomposition of organics in the form of biochemical oxygen demand BOD, as well as the sludge yield per BOD consumed. Now let's take a look at one calculation example. Pause the video for a couple of minutes and write down a list of what you think may be important information. Let's first calculate the primary sludge quantity. The solids contribution per capita is often a data available at the wastewater treatment plant based on their collected data in the past. It also varies depending on the type of treatment and type of sludge. In this example, let's take the value for primary and excess activated sludge from the table, which gives 0.085. The number of resident population is easy to find in the statement, and we have 5,000 as its value. Next, we can find 65% of suspended solids is removed by the primary clarifier, as well as the assumption that the primary sludge has 4% dry solids. In the statement, it was also mentioned that the primary sludge-specific gravity is 1.01. Because water at 4 degrees Celsius has a density of 1,000 kg per cubic meter, the primary sludge's density should be 1,010 kg per cubic meter. Substituting all these numbers into the simple equation, we find the primary sludge is produced at 6.84 cubic meters per day. Now let's take a look at the secondary sludge quantity. We have a yield coefficient of 0.35 that is given by the statement. BOD removal during the secondary treatment process is an important input. However, it is not given in the statement of this problem. 
we can use online sources to find relevant data for completing this problem. Typically, a wastewater treatment plant receives 20,000 to 50,000 cubic meters per day of wastewater. We use a small discharge of 20,000 cubic meters per day here. Similarly, let's assume a moderate BOD concentration of 250 grams per cubic meters for the influent of the wastewater treatment plant. The BOD concentration and the wastewater flow rate can be used to calculate the BOD loading. Multiplying these two parameters, we have 5,000 kilograms of BOD per day into the wastewater treatment plant. It is important to note that 33% of the BOD will be removed by the primary clarifier, and the overall BOD removal by the wastewater treatment plant is 95%. Hence, the BOD removal by the secondary treatment is 62%, as calculated using 95% subtracted by 33%. Eventually, we can calculate the BOD removal in kilograms per day, which should be 3,100 kilograms per day. We can also find in the statement that the secondary sludge has 5% dry solids and a specific gravity of 1.02. Therefore, we can find the density of secondary sludge as 1020 kilograms per cubic meter. With the information calculated and listed above, we now see that the secondary sludge production is 21.17 cubic meters per day. I hope you find the previous example helpful. Pause the video anytime and redo the problem step by step. Another example in this video is about how to size an anaerobic digester. There are two types of anaerobic digesters that are commonly designed, although more adapted designs can be found in reality. The high-rate digester operates in a completely mixed mode. As sludge enters the anaerobic digester, the mixer will instantly mix the new sludge with existing sludge, forming a slurry rich in anaerobic microorganisms. This type of anaerobic digester is a completely mixed flow reactor CMFR. The volume of the digester can be found as the product of the flow rate and the sludge retention time. The sizing of a low-rate digester is relatively more complex because the sludge inside the digester is categorized into digesting sludge and digested sludge, considering their dissimilar characteristics and properties. We will use one example to explain how the volume of a low-rate anaerobic digester is determined. Pause the video to read the statement. We will begin the solution in the next slide. To find the total digester volume V, we will need to find the total sludge volume Vs first. Typically, the volume of the digester should be twice the volume of the total sludge held by the digester. This will provide sufficient space for supernatant, scum, and gas in the digester. To calculate the total sludge volume is not straightforward, because the production rate of the digesting sludge is a varying parameter. The solution can begin with calculating the flow rate of fresh sludge added to the digester. It is a simple parameter related to the service population, the dry solid yield, the fraction of dry solid in the sludge, and the density of the sludge. We can easily identify the values for these parameters in the problem statement. Once the fresh sludge enters the digester, they will decompose through anaerobic digestion. The time for digestion TD is directly related to the activities of the anaerobic microorganisms in the digester. Temperature is a decisive factor for the digestion time. Typically, a relatively higher temperature favors microbial activities, and the relationship between the digester temperature and the digestion time can be found in many reference books. In this problem, the operating temperature of the digester is 35 degrees Celsius, which is close to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a graphical solution, we estimate the digestion time TD to be 23 days. Now let's take a look at the production rate of digested sludge in the digester. The digested sludge is considered non-decomposable in the digester, which consists of the fixed solids in the fresh sludge and a fraction of the volatile biodegradable solids in the fresh sludge that has not been destroyed due to the insufficient retention time. According to the population 25,000 in the fresh sludge dry solids yield per capita, we can find the total solids entering the digester is 2,750 kg per day. Among this 2,750 kg, 70% are volatile solids, meaning that 30% are fixed solids that are considered non-biodegradable. So we have 825 kg per day in the form of fixed solids. The 70% of the total solids, known as volatile solids, are considered biodegradable, totaling 925 kg per day. 
However, due to the limitation of sludge retention, only 65% of the volatile solids can be destroyed through anaerobic digestion within the sludge storage time of 45 days. It means that 35% of the volatile solids will become part of the digested sludge in the digester. We calculate the value to be about 674 kilograms per day. Now we have two sources of digested sludge. One from fixed solids 825 kilograms per day, and the other from undigested volatile solids 674 kilograms per day. Both are considered digested sludge, and both have a wet specific gravity of 1.03 or density of 1,030 kg per cubic meter. We use the mass divided by the density, and we can find the volume. Therefore, approximately 20.8 cubic meters per day of digested sludge would be produced. Finally, we now have all the parameters needed for the estimation of digester volume. Substituting all the parameters listed in this page, which we concluded previously, we have an estimated digester volume of 3,344 cubic meters calculated with the information provided in the example problem.